You're listening to Character Crusade. Welcome, everybody, to Character Crusade Skyrim Roleplay Workshop. I'm Stu. And I'm Joe. And I'm Matt. And we are back in the studio recording the first episode of our Virtual Immersion Tour 2016. We are very happy and excited to be here, and our first episode is going to be broadcast live from our very own The House of Troubles, located in Falkreath Hold. And we've got some treats, some surprises coming up for you in the next hour or so. Uh, we hope that you enjoy this first stop on our tour. But first, we'd like to uh, give a kind word from our sponsors. Hey, before we do that, should we double check to make sure everyone can hear us since we had some issues last week or last episode? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> can everybody hear us? Give us a little something. Sorry, I didn't mean to throw a wrench in the <laughs> in, in everything. I just All right. Uh huh. Anything? Bueller. <laughs> Bueller. <laughs> so they're going to start hearing us right about now. <laughs> Can everybody? Okay. Okay. There it is. All right. Uh, once again, thank thanks everybody. Oh, hey, Gunner Eleven says you can hear us. Great, awesome. great. All systems go. So let's kick it off right. Uh, let's start off with a word from our kind and generous sponsors, uh, Draugr Lager. This podcast is sponsored by Draugr Lager Brewhouse, made with only the finest ingredients and lovingly aged in clay urns for four thousand years. Draugr Lager Brews set the standard for undead craft beers. With more than eight specialty, eight different specialty and seasonal beers to choose from, Draugr Lager is sure to satisfy even the dustiest of palates. So pick up a Draugr Lager today and experience the refreshing taste of the undead with no bitter afterlife. Oh, we are here. Here we are. <laughs> we did it. That was Can fantastic. you believe it? And there's three of us <laughs> packed in here tonight. We nice. are, um, it's close, but, oh, it's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> the House of Troubles is expansive, but not the broadcast desk. No, no, it really well, isn't. They could only give us a small corner of the building, so Yeah, I know. Um, obviously, you know, uh, with the three of us sitting here at, at this table, um, the, the proprietor, Griffey, has kind of, put us back sort of in the in the corner here a little bit um so there's only so much that you can see going on behind us but we will do our best uh to to take full advantage of of the space that we have here um it is very i think uh timely that we are actually broadcasting from the house of troubles as you know if you've been following the house of troubles as a mod joe and i built this 
quite a while ago now. Yeah. Um, and recently, Joe has begun work on an expansion, which is coming along very nicely. Oh, it's it's getting there. It's getting there. No, yep. it it's amazing. Let's yeah, be fair. Well, yeah, for I all. think it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's a couple caverns and some tunnels, so it's <laughs> it's got some work to do. <laughs> but it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but beyond that, uh, Joe has been working on some lore that has to do with the House of Troubles as well. So we thought, what a perfect way to kick off our virtual immersion tour of Skyrim. Uh, at the House of Troubles with, with our own creation. And we're going to talk a little bit more uh, coming up here about some of the things that Joe and Matt have been working on on kind of the lore side of this whole project having to do with um, the House of Troubles and Haldir's Cairn, right? Tirelessly. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right? Yep. Oh, so, Matt? Yes. Just to let you know, yes, watch your head because there's a guy <gasps> shoot, shoot, <laughs> yeah. shooting <Jeez>. above you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's Ornery Wallace. He's uh, Dude. he's a he's a wood elf. He's firing arrows yes, up there. Let's. I'm just gonna maybe get out of his way. A little let's here. have a little tour, uh, a who's who of of the people that are uh, proprietors uh, or who are hanging out in the House of Troubles tonight as we broadcast from this location. <laughs> uh, we have Sylvia. You can see her uh, here. Sylvia is is actually kind of a tour guide, if you will. Sylvia is going to appear in some capacity in every single location that we broadcast from. So if you have your eyes open, you'll be able to spot her, kind of a Where's Waldo kind of thing, I guess. <laughs> um, we have Blot, Griff, He's the guy who owns the place. You'll see him wandering around here. Who else we got? Strings. She is the house bard. However, she is taking a break tonight as uh, Robard Graves is in attendance and will be actually playing tonight. So she's been upstaged. Yes. And Stax is here. You yeah. can see Stax will be wandering around the background tonight. Uh, so... You know, this kind of gives you an idea of, of who's here. There are some other characters. There, there are several other characters who aren't even shown yes. here uh, that, that will be kind of wandering around in the background and doing things, including Ornery Wallace. We'll get to see a couple of different views of the House of Troubles as we go forward. Cool. So we're going to try to do this for every location that we broadcast from. I kind of feel like Mikey from... Uh Monsters Inc. here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there I am. There he is. You can okay. see me. <laughs> all right. So now we're all we're now we're all in. All right. um, hey, so Joe. Hey. Let's let's move on to some announcement type information. Uh, to start with, let's do a quick recap of the virtual immersion tour. Uh, if you recall, this this is a virtual tour of Skyrim where we are going to be broadcasting from these locations. We have publicized uh, this schedule complete with dates and times. Right now, all of the live streams are scheduled to happen at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And you can find the the full list uh, by going to our virtual immersion tour jump off page, which I believe is vit.charactercrusade.com. That will give you the full schedule as well as links to some cool stuff. Uh, this is kind of the, offic the official stop list, if you will, but we are going to reserve the right to rearrange them if it makes sense and possibly add a few more in. So in the event that there's no carriages going there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it really just depends on infrastructure. I mean, if, if we go there and, you know, it's it's a rugged spot and we can't get our satellite <laughs> trucks in or whatever, then we'll just have to come up with something else. We'll have to teleport them in or whatever. Well, I mean, Candlehearth Hall coming up, and mm -hmm. that could be a pretty treacherous trip getting up there. Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, the roads aren't great. You know, they get to a certain point where it, it mm -hmm. just gets really icy and not to mention <laughs> wolves and... Well, Sherpas. It's a mess. Yeah. We need Sherpas. We, mm -hmm. don't have, we don't have any Sherpas on staff. That's a challenge. You know, <laughs> it's just us. Giants could make a ton of money as Sherpas. They really oh, could. Couldn't they? Go. They'd totally outpace everybody, though, yeah, and they'd make the off with everybody's care. goods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Strap it all to their legs, uh, and it's gone forever. I know. <laughs> so one uh, exciting announcement that we have is, is if you haven't heard already – um, Dark Fox 127 is releasing Karen Theer Tower on August 18th. Hmm. And we have been 
in negotiations with Dark Fox to do a broadcast from Karen Theer Tower itself. We aren't sure when that's going to happen yet, but we do know it is going to happen. So Karen Theer Tower Sweet. is going to be added to this list. Um, we have also gotten some interesting suggestions from you all, the viewers and listeners of this podcast. And uh, there are uh, several uh, locations that we are considering adding to the list. It just depends on, you know, how smoothly this all goes and how much tolerance we have for <laughs> all the setup required. <laughs> and how much tolerance everybody else has of us <laughs> to, to do this. giving virtual yeah. tours. Yeah, exactly. So here's the list. Uh, like I said, if you want to get to the jump off page, get all that information, go to VIT, as in Virtual Immersion Tour, dot charactercrusade.com and you can kind of see everything that we have going. So the next uh, update we have is regarding uh, Patreon and iTunes. We have uh, got some new Patreon subscribers, which we are very excited about. Very. And then we've gotten some great uh, five-star reviews as well. Right, Matt? And we absolutely have, Stu. And uh, I know we don't have a lot of time to go through it, but we always are grateful for the folks who are providing uh, reviews and joining us on Patreon. We uh, One of the pieces of feedback we've got is that we don't remind people all the time of where the Patreon uh, is, Patreon dot charactercrusade.com. I wanted to say special thank you to DJ Taylor for joining us. Um, again, every little bit of contribution counts from everybody. DJ, grateful for you to join us here in August of 2016. And uh, as other people look into the options for Patreon support, would certainly encourage anybody who's listening who wants to join us on that and in this journey to help us out a little bit. Obviously, the things that you're seeing changing here on the podcast make a big difference when we are going from audio only to streaming video and all the components that go along with it. So thanks, DJ Taylor, for joining us on Patreon. Woohoo! Hey. Love it. That's awesome. Sweet. Thank five you, star review time. Let's and I have to say the largest five star review we've gotten from <laughs> anybody and uh, it's been fantastic. Uh, we got this little bit of feedback at the end of July. I was I was out of town. I was getting mm -hmm. sand in my ears and stuff. So nice. <laughs> uh, to Bella Dan from July 25th, this is uh, quite a lengthy review. I would encourage everybody to go out and read it on iTunes if you haven't been out looking at some of the feedback there. Five-star review, and I think that this started off largely as a reason for uh, – for Bella Dan to ask me to use the word verisimilitude, but that's okay. Uh, if you enjoy words like verisimilitude, if you think role play comes in many shapes and sizes, if you enjoy witty and urbane repartee, then this is a podcast for you. Wow. That's not the whole thing. That's I'm so a, excited to be witty. And, there's uh, like 900 more words here, and they're great all sentence. fantastic. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, no, it's a spectacular review. I I know, well, I, I, I appreciate everything that was written in it, as I do all of the reviews, of course. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to summarize just a couple of things in yeah, here because I think that they're really important. A lot of the feedback that we've gotten on the five-star reviews has been uh, talking about a little bit the production quality, about what they've been hearing on the podcast. There's a lot of great feedback here uh, regarding some of the things that we do, noticing that we're seeing over time some changes to our format, trying out lots of different things. Uh, this is not what we do full time all the time. So we like to play around with that format. There are a couple things that we're going to try to uh, improve on for everybody who's new to the podcast or even those who have been on with us for a long time and are just looking for some reminders, for example, about where Patreon is, where you can find stories on our website, things like that. We'll make sure to get those out there. And uh, I'll do what I can to not ruin the show anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you ruin it when you leave. Yeah, that just means you got You have to be here. I'll show up more. Oh god! All right. Well, Bella Dan, I wanted to say a uh, deep, heartfelt thanks from us, the trio of guys here. We love this role play stuff, and uh, we hope that everyone is going to continue to join us on this journey. Everybody who has not yet given us a review on iTunes, we would love to see it. If you would like to join us on Patreon, we would love to see that as well. Uh, we got lots of great stuff to continue producing for you, not just this awesome list of places for the virtual immersion tour, but much, much more. Yes, absolutely. And we'll leave it at that for this time around, Stu. Okay, sounds good. All right. Sweet. Well, yeah, thank you for all of you who've gotten out there on iTunes. Uh, there, there are more reviews out there as well, and we will be getting to big thank yous for you guys as, as well in upcoming episodes. Absolutely. Trying to uh, you know spread out the appreciation a little bit here. So let's let's move on to just a few uh, updates <clears throat> regarding the website, the channel, the podcast. That takes us into some new things in the shop. So 
if you haven't noticed, we have put some new items in the shop. First is an official virtual immersion tour uh, gear. We have t-shirts for men and women plus a mug. And remember, you know, this is a concert jersey. You know, this is like, this is a concert tour. Like, Dude, I was the there tour, when right? they did that. I mean, seriously. So <clears throat> it's going to be a collector's item someday, man. Come and on. No, and no one cares if you buy the men's or women's shirt. That's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Do Joe. what you like. <laughs> you no, know, it all fits. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that that is out there if you're interested. We have also launched, uh, in on behalf of our generous sponsors, Draugr Lager, we have launched a, a series of Draugr Lager gear pieces and added a beautiful glass frosted beer mug. How appropriate is that? I think it's very appropriate. <laughs> Joe loves it. <laughs> that way you can always you can always enjoy the refreshing taste of the undead with no bitter afterlife. That's, that's right. That's correct. That's right. That's correct. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, go and go and check it out. We've got a sale going on right now and it it's only going to go through I think the 9th. So I'm not going to say for sure, but I'm really hoping Joe's going to do yeah. like a ShamWow thing right now. <laughs> if you pounce <laughs> right now, you get 15% off no. everything. No, that won't happen. And you know what's cool about uh, yeah. the, the uh, printer that we're using here? If you get out there and drop one of these items into your cart, mm -hmm. you don't have to take it as is. You can actually change the color of this stuff oh, yeah. to any color that you want. So... That's that's part of the appeal here. And so if if you're looking out there and you're saying, wow, is that really a $15 mug? That seems expensive. A $15 mug? Please understand that the mug is, is probably cheaper than that to produce, but we add a little bit on top that we get to keep. So this is a way for you to actually contribute something to the podcast and support us without having to commit to, you know, some kind of a, a monthly thing on Patreon or whatever. So Bo both are options. Mm -hmm. We would like to see both. Yeah. If you would like to throw down in both the gear store and mm -hmm. on Patreon. Yeah. That would rock. Yeah, we would really appreciate it. So that is the only way, folks, that, that we can make any money to kind of support the ongoing improvements we want to make. Mm -hmm. So, you know, every time that somebody buys a bit of gear from uh, from that shop, we make a, a small commission. And believe me, it's very small, but it's a, it's something. It contributes to to what we want to do here. And you know, I don't think there's any arguing that we are, you know, making good use of the funds that those of yep. you who've contributed are providing. It goes so, right to this yep, show. We definitely appreciate it. I would like to advocate, by the way, mm -hmm. that once we get enough shirts and everything out the door that we have like a rebellious work day kind of a scenario where everyone wears their skyrim character crusade gear to work you know casual friday oh yeah send absolutely. us some pictures i think that would be cool <laughs> yeah do that you know if you wear a suit to work you can still wear your Draugr logger shirt underneath it's kind of like superman you just got to peel back the the, the, the layer of the onion and... yeah exactly <laughs> All right, so with that, we are going to get on to the meat of this podcast, which takes us to uh, Character Craft. And I think um, for Character Craft, what we are going to do is we are sort of refocusing a little bit on the format of the podcast. And we are uh, trying to, I, I think, kind of nail down the format a little bit here. And, and now that we're kind of through what I would consider to be sort of the the heat of interview season, if it were, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we're, we're going to try to get back to more of the segments that, that we started this podcast with. Uh, we love talking to people. We love, you know, seeing how other people role play and so forth, but it's always exciting to kind of get back into some of the old segments. One of those is character craft and we're going to change up character craft a little bit. Essentially, what we're going to do is round robin like we always do, but we're going to open it up a little bit because we're all kind of focused on different things. This is our opportunity to talk about any project that we're working on related to Skyrim, related to the channel. So, as you know, we're all working on different things all the time as well as playing the game. So the character craft segment yes. is a great opportunity for us to just kind of 
give an update on things that we're working on. So that's kind of what we're going to do here. Did you want to start us off, Joe? Sure. sure. All right, let's do it. Let's do some character craft. All right, well, <clears throat> I have been doing a little bit with the new Argonian character. 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 <laughs> Ooh, characters. That's affecting your speech. Uh, I love that. It's like a character and a fractal. <laughs> character. I don't know exactly how what that would be, but... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, okay. um, not quite as much as I wanted to this weekend, so I've kind of been dividing my time between the 2016 modding guide from Cal at Dirty Wiz Got Weasel. Got to say. Um, fantastic series, and yep. I'm really hoping to <laughs> ramp up and get my game kind of squared away and running much more smoothly than the haphazard mod inserts that I've been doing. Um, <laughs> had full, full intent of getting that done this weekend until I got an email from Steam telling me that Oblivion Legendary Deluxe Get It All version was 40% off. Oh. Ooh. So for about 12 bucks, I was Steam. able to get nice. Oblivion with all of the DLCs. and For 40% off. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So wow. I kind of started nice. playing Oblivion this weekend. <clears throat> we'll forgive you. And getting a new mod organizer install for that and <laughs> installing some of the unofficial patches. Like starting all over. <laughs> I know, so, right? So, so now you know how but, I feel. But, but I'm not going to get carried away with Oblivion. Um, Why not? Well, because I just want to, I want to focus back on Skyrim. Sure. And I do have a mod to continue working on. Okay. So yeah, there's that. Uh, that is underway. What else have I been up to? Um, House of Troubles, Matt and I have actually kind of been doing a little t in tandem work. I'll let Mac talk about his piece on that yep. a little bit later. Uh, so that should be coming up uh, the same, the sa eh, roughly about the same time if I can get a page set up on the website uh, by the time this is released. Um, cool. The full length story should be out soon. And what else? That's kind of, uh, I think, where I'm at at the moment. <laughs> Just a lot of pieces of everything, and it's <laughs> time to focus on one thing yeah. or another. But uh, I really want to get my game. Oh, I've got. I I did get my new Elgato recorder. Yes. Yeah. So that's what we need. As soon as I get my game ironed out and running nicely, uh, I am going to be plugging that in and doing some playthroughs. And I have a beginning idea that I think is going to be a lot of fun. Awesome, and uh, I can I can rattle that one off now if you want. I'm excited, or we can wait. Share, share, yeah. all, all right, right. Share. 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 So, share. the idea Sorry. is to play a Dwemer. I love that. So I am going to start off with a Dwemer character. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a lot of specifics other than uh, he's kind of going to be the the Dwemer that got left behind, so to speak. So I this, love that concept. This should be a lot of fun. So uh, I'm yeah. not sure how I'm going to play him or her, probably a him, and uh, mm -hmm. where I'm going to start them out and how I'm going to gear them up and all that. But So I'm going to start looking at some Dwemer mods. Uh, if you've got any good suggestions, uh, please feel free to let me know, and uh, we'll go from there. So that's going to be my first Let's Play is a uh, uh, Dwemer, Dwemer character. It's going to be great. Excellent. I so, couldn't be more excited. I really wanted to do a, the Argonian yeah. thing, but then this just kind of crept into my head, and it kind of stuck. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yep. Yep. Things are creepy in his head. So. <laughs> 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 well, it kind of started out with a whole cryo chamber release. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that, that, that will... Industrial ambient sound kind of... So that was... Yeah, that's kind of what was the catalyst. Foster a little bit, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. so... Oh, good. well, that's great. Sounds so, like you have a ton of stuff going on. I've got plenty to keep me busy. That's and he gets cool. to say El Gato. El, El Gato. gato. Don't, don't, I love El that. Don't, 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 yeah. El Gato. Don't. Don't. <laughs> I guess that's a different take I than I was thinking. So. But, yeah. I was thinking more flamenco. Or <laughs> yeah, 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 so was I, actually. <laughs> Little bit of Zorro, perhaps. Well, yeah. No, I went Mr. Roboto. So. That's okay. Hey, so you know. we got the reference. That's so good. are we saying about things in my head? Nothing. Okay. Okay. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who's up? All right. I'm going to follow up if I can with Joe's because do it, the work that we've been doing on the 
House of Troubles has been great fun. Um, I think I may have memorized a fair portion of Joe's story at this point because in trying to get it just right, I've read it a lot. <laughs> I've also read it in a lot of very different places. Don't read into that. I'm just trying to find the right place for the right sound. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The place where I found the right sound for this was in my truck. Nice. Which is very strange because I just couldn't sort of get the right reverb anywhere else without doing it in post. And so I ended up recording it again in the truck rather than in the car or the van or anything else. Mm -hmm. So Joe sent along this story to me and said that uh, he wanted to also participate in the Fireside Stories. I'm really excited to read it. And for those of you who are getting emails from me um, that I'm behind on yours, it's Joe's fault. <laughs> Um, but it's okay because it means that I've sure, gotten a lot of things. I know, but I got a lot of things nailed down now that should make it easier for me to do these other ones. Good. good. Uh, no, so it, it came out fantastic. I can't wait to uh, I'm glad you until it's it. it's released. It's it really is a lot of fun. To so we've done to. some different things with this one than we've done in the past uh, with some sound effects and whatnot. But it it ties into something that Stuart and I did a year or two ago. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, with the other audio book uh, Kickstarter thing, which was yes. great fun mm -hmm. too. Um, and this just sort of builds on that, and it's great to be able to have a story from one of our own here, uh, out there, about mm -hmm. a mod that yep. you guys built. So that will be released very soon. Uh, cool. The other stories that are in the queue, hopefully we'll be able to get them out inside the month, uh, going back and re-recording quite a bit of stuff because the content is great. Uh, we did release Strag Rod uh, from Lisette right. uh, a few weeks ago. We released a segment from Five Fables. Uh, I don't remember the title. Uh, and then nah. soon to be this House of Troubles piece. Robards Rule. Robards Rule, yeah. Yep. So we get back into uh, an awful lot of recording. Me being away for a couple of weeks certainly didn't help, but uh, maybe it got my voice a little bit more relaxed. There you so go. So I'm excited to get back into it. Please, please, if you have more content that you want to submit for the Fireside Stories, we've got a form on our website. Please jump into that and send it along, and I'll respond as quick as I can. Cool. And that's what I've got this week, Stu. Sweet. And Joe. Love it. Love it. Uh, yeah, um, cool. I guess I'm up. You're up. So as you know, uh, many of you know, I have been struggling with some PC issues lately. Well, those have been resolved, and my machine hey. is running better than it was when I took it out of the box the first time. I was going to say you've never been particularly worried about being PC, but I understand what you mean now. Right, exactly. Computer-wise. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> come on. Sorry, I just had to ask. Um, Who's running around behind you, Joe? Um, I'm not sure. Man, that is the I clap. Think I, I think I see Robard in the back playing. The clap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's called the clap. He's an arms dealer. Okay, uh, I don't no, know the clap. I was always told to avoid the clap at all costs. <laughs> I know. Nobody knows why his name is the clap. Why his nickname is the clap? But they people are speculating. I'm sure there's a good yeah. story behind yeah. it. Yeah, and you can see Robard. Yeah, he's playing in the background, yeah. way back there. Well, I'm sorry to have interrupted. I apologize. No, no problem. Looks like Joe was about to get mugged. So I've resolved my PC <laughs> issues. Um, I have been um, working closely uh, with Cal, and we have put together, I think, a mod setup that is going to work very well. Been putting a lot of testing into it. It's it's not perfect, but it's certainly where it needs to be in order for me to resume the Rune Runner storyline, which Great. I'm very excited about. So cool. Rune Runner is going to resume this week. There will be an episode of Rune Runner coming out this week. So <clears throat> ready, ready your headphones. Yes. I am billing this as Rune Runner Reborn because there are some things that are going to change in terms of the mod lineup um, for episode seven. So it, it it may look slightly different in terms of um, just the environment. Rune Runner R E. Nice. <laughs> yes. So, Sorry. Rune, Rune, Rune Runner Reborn, it, it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be tons of fun. Um, so, that is important. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. But, in addition, um, I'm trying to get things set up so that I can get my other profiles going. So, right now, we're still working on getting Silee's profile back in order. And I'm hoping to get uh, Sagramore's profile uh, at least enough in order that I can finish off that series. Sure. But right now, I'm just very, very excited to be able to start producing um, Vander's episodes again. And right. I think uh, one of the things that 
is very interesting that I'm super excited about is in the lineup of mods, I'm using a, a series of, of fairly, fairly new mods. So a new um, add-on uh, for Finnis, a new add-on for the XP32 Skeleton, and then also a new PC head tracking emotions and voice option. Awesome. Wow. And I have pre-recorded a whole bunch of voice content for Vander. So when he's walking around and he's going into different locations and he's encountering people, he will actually be able to speak to them without me intervening, which wow. is pretty interesting. Yeah, that'll be cool. So I will be able to speak for him at certain times, but if he's just wandering through the crowd and stuff, he's going to say, hey, how you doing? Bah, bah, bah. You know, he's going he's gonna to be <laughs> jaw jacking with people like You're crazy. You're never going to get him to shut up. Cool. Uh, it's, it's, really, <laughs> it's really amazing. It's really amazing. So... Sounds um, like an awesome setup. Yeah, I'm very, very excited about it. Um, with a keystroke, I can just make him say something randomly, or anytime I open a book, he'll say something. Anytime I try to pick a lock, he'll say something. And the cool thing about it is these are all pre-recorded things that I have put into that lineup. So when he says things, they come out randomly, and I don't know what he's going to say. And the interesting thing about that is it will force me to, as a player, as a role player, to react, react. to Vander. So Vander is going to say some things to characters in this game that maybe I wouldn't have said from a role-playing perspective, but that I'll be forced, <laughs> forced to react to. And I love the fact that it, it really feels like Vander has a mind of his own. Um, He's choosing his own adventure. I know. I, I took him through the Bee and Barb the other day, and he said some really inappropriate stuff. <laughs> and it, it was so much fun to just, like, kind of react to that. You know, like, who? <laughs> uh, you know, did I say that out loud? Uh, that kind of thing. It was, I meant to use my inside voice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was wonderful. Uh, so, oh, anyway, fun. I think it's going to be just a ton of fun. And um, I'm also going to be producing a new mod list to go with it. So that will be available in, you know, the show notes. So if you want to try and figure out what I'm using and use it for yourself, you can do that. Uh, I am also considering using that framework to create folders of pre-recorded voice types mm -hmm. for my characters, such as Robart and Vander, that uh, you, the viewers, could download and put into your own game. So if you wanted to, you know, play a game with some of these voice parts uh, as voiced by either Vander or Robard, you could do that. And I think that combined with uh, the uh, Robard NPC mod that I'm hoping to roll out here in the next four weeks would allow you to actually use Robard either as a follower or use the preset to create a character for yourself that looks like Robard. Use that in, combine, in combination with those voice files to get some of Robard's voice into your game, which I think could be insanely fun. Absolutely. So uh, more to come Sweet. on that. So that brings us, gentlemen, to a short break. We're going to take a very short break, and then we're going to jump into play theory. And tonight we are doing Quest Connector. Hey! Quest Connector. I'm not going to point because Quest that's connector. rude. Yeah, he doesn't point because he thinks it's rude. It's rude. But I'm pointing because rude. I want to get your attention. <laughs> and we the reason, want you. The reason that I want to get your attention is because we are going to pick one quest line that will be part of the mix here. And we want you guys to pick the other one. So Ooh. while we're on this break, give it some thought. Think about what you think might be an interesting, you know, either a short quest like a side quest or something from one of the larger quest lines that you could connect with what we're going to suggest. So we're not going to tell you what we're what, what quest we're picking right now, but we're going to let you go ahead and pick one. And then when we get back from the break, we'll check out what's in the chat. And then uh, we will figure out a way to hammer these together with Quest Connect. This will easily be just blowing Jimmy Fallon's other randomizers out of the water, I think. It's going to be Absolutely. it's going to be nuts. So, <laughs> ridiculous. We'll, we'll see you in a couple minutes Join everybody. Us.
This podcast is sponsored by Draugr Lager Brewhouse. Made with only the finest ingredients and lovingly aged in clay urns for 4,000 years, Draugr Lager Brews set the standard for undead craft beers. With more than eight different specialty and seasonal beers to choose from, Draugr Lager is sure to satisfy even the dustiest of palates. So pick up a Draugr Lager today and experience the refreshing taste of the undead with no bitter afterlife.
Hello, everybody. It's the Couch Warrior crew here. We're going to get started in just another minute or so. So if you are away from your computer, you better get back. <laughs> grab some food, grab a coffee, finish whatever break you're taking. You don't need to bring that back. And we'll see you in about 60 seconds. And we're back. After the intermission, we're back with uh, Matt and Stu and Joe, and we're going to talk about Quest Connector. All of you lively commenters here. <laughs> All of you lively commenters bringing some very uh, interesting and challenging Quest Connector options to the table here in uh, the House of Troubles. So I think we've got a little bit of a plan of attack here, if you will. No, no, we don't have a plan of attack. No plan of yeah, attack? We're, we're going to attack anyway. Sit yes. back and let it sizzle, is that what you mean? Yes. That's half the fun, right? That, absolutely. I think the key to making Quest Connector work is to not have a plan in the first place. Um, absolutely. You know? Okay, okay so, so let's do this. Yeah, so we're going to start out with, as we are broadcasting from the House of Troubles, we're going we're gonna to slip Haldir's Cairn into the mix. And then I think we're going to try to uh, tie in the Wabajack. And what was our other ones do? Uh, Wabajack and Molag Ball, Molag Ball were the suggestions out there. A couple of them out so, there. So, Yeah, I think, you know, let's start there and then see where it takes us. Okay? Right. Can we do that? Hey, uh, for those of you who are wondering what the holy hell uh, Stu is doing... We got kind of a little glitchy thing going on here with, with one of our uh, backgrounds. I don't know why. So I'm substituting. Matt, we got a hot spot behind you there. Can you adjust the light? That's because I'm so hot. Let's do it. Hotness. Is that less hot? That is better. Oh, yeah. So 
I had uh, gotten some footage uh, from the loft area of the House of Troubles, and that was supposed to be for segment three. I don't know what happened to it. It, like, shortened up into a 15-second loop and just kept pop, pop, going. <laughs> so I don't know what the deal is with that. But, you know, we punt. Um, it's not our fault. This establishment just does not I – mean, they haven't run fiber out here yet, so <laughs> we're doing what we can with what we got. So, okay, so – We've got Haldir's Cairn. We've got uh, Molag Ball. And what was the other one? Wabajack. Wabajack. Okay. Why don't we start out by walking through each one of these very briefly so we can understand what each one is about. And then we're going to figure out how to mash them together. Okay. And by mashing them together, for those of you who are not familiar with the Quest Connector segment. Or mashing things together. Or mashing things together. Um... Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to view these three quest lines uh, from the perspective of one character. And how, how, what ideas could we come up with to tie these three uh, quests together so that they would all fit the story of a particular character, yep. right? Yep. So one of, the, one of the reasons that we do this is because of the ongoing issue that people have with figuring out how to marry up these disparate quest lines into something that makes sense for the long-term narrative for right. a character. So Quest Connector is a great exercise where we can kind of practice figuring out how to take right. quests that may, on the surface, really have nothing to do with one another and make them work together. So to start us out, I think it would be good for us to just kind of go through these quests and make sure we understand kind of what the high points of each one are. And of course, in order for this to work, it, it sort of assumes that you, the player, have been through these quests once before or have done enough research on them to understand where, kind of how they function, at least enough that, that you could presumably mush them together. So, uh, Joe, do you want to maybe give us a little background on Haldir first, and then we'll, we'll hit the other two? All right. So <clears throat> there's a couple of different quests that are tied to Haldir's cairn that will actually get you there. Um, one is uh, Rajorn's drum, or Rajorn, I guess. I'm not sure exactly how okay. you would pronounce that. Uh, another would be Renil's journal. Uh, so these are things that would kind of happen outside right. of you know the bigger picture that would draw you into Haldir's Cairn. Okay. Uh, there are a couple Dongar related as well. Um, huh. I did not know that. So it, you know, if you look at the Wikia, uh, it does list kind of out the, the overview of. Mm -hmm. What will bring you there? Okay. Um, and the drum issue specifically, I'm aware of that one because that that is a quest line that you can pick up at the Bard College So right. to, to recover that drum. And I don't believe that you can actually pick that one up until after you've gone through the whole process of becoming sort of an official member. So that's part of the Bard. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. so maybe we have a Bard. Perhaps. Yeah, Hanging out be. at the House of Troubles. <laughs> there That's you a go. pretty good bar I love going it. on at the House of Troubles. I know, so right? Maybe he's a friend of Strings. Uh, yeah. Or Why she, not? Or, yeah. or of Roe Bard. Now, of course, in order for this idea to work, you would have to download the House of Troubles and install <laughs> it in your mod organizer. Uh, because Strings is uh, actually the House Bard there. Yes. So. But that would certainly work. So... We've got a bard looking for, all right, for Rajorn's drum. For drum, and that brings you into Haldir's Cairn. Uh, and Haldir's Cairn will start out if you come in through the the normal entrance. Uh, you'll come into this kind of large cavern mm -hmm. with that big beam of light coming down through the ceiling, which is basically uh, this energy source, like the one that's for burning Haldir. through your head right now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm impressed. It's like Stargate. It, yeah, Joe's got God rays shining yeah. down. And look at that. <laughs> it's just insane. God, look at you. All the NPCs are wondering what's going on there. They've never yeah. seen that much light at once. Yeah. They, you know what I noticed? Those, N, those NPCs, they don't really, they don't give a shit at all about this broadcast going on. They're just doing their own no, thing. It's a good thing it's not raining or there'd be a lot of water coming in through that yeah. hole. <laughs> Yeah. You know, if Robart's playing Spotlight. in the background, there's probably a lot more entertainment Robart's there. Robart's <laughs> actually sitting directly behind me. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, it, there we go. I need to turn this way. I can get it. Oh, there's stacks. Oop. Yeah, Robart's. 
he's back here sitting at this table. He's been sitting at that table the whole time. So he's kind of a lazy bugger, isn't he? Oh. <laughs> he's yeah. tired. Yeah. <laughs> he just get he's just he's ramping up busy, for the night. Getting busy. Yeah. Yep. He's just ramping up. <laughs> yep. All <laughs> right. Waiting for his All audience. All right. So that's kind of the, the when you get into Karen, you got this this beam mm-hmm. of light which Haldir is feeding off of. Um, mm-hmm. There's journal entries in there for the, the unfortunate souls that you find. Mm-hmm. Um, and without going step by step through the Right. The we whole don't have thing. to do yeah. the steps, but we um, need to get the gist. So you you basically you progress through to mm-hmm. and I'm not sure well, obviously I don't know exactly where the drum is, but it is somewhere in there. So Yeah, I don't know either. I can't remember. And um, some of these are No, this one isn't, but I know like the Renil's journal, it's more of a radiant, so it's possible that it could be there, but it might oh, not be. Okay. But the drum always is, it looks. Yeah, if, so, so I mean at that point it pretty much just turns into a dungeon crawl with a boss at the end, right? Kind and of once yeah. Once you get in there. Yeah, yeah. So you you get the ger- the drum, it's it's in a chest somewhere. Okay. So very good. So we've got our bard. Okay. And this this one is like way on the southern border of Falkreath. Yeah, it's it's so, right on the border. Um yep. I think the wiki of denotes it being on the Hammerfell border, but it's kind of right in that trifecta of Cyrodiil, Hammerfell, uh-huh. and the Falkreath uh, Reach province. Okay. Falkreath Reach. Falkreath Reach. Fall Reach. Fall Reach. Yep, I think that's the official term. <laughs> Fall Creech. Fall Reach. Fall Creech. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stand on the three corners of Fall Creech. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so there we go. Okay. Cool. Um, then that takes us to Wabajack. Um, oh, Wabajack. The Wabajack, that one is interesting because that that brings in, um, oh, man, Shigarath. Shigarath. Yes. Uh, the Daedric Prince, Shigarath, and starts off in Solitude where you run into a crazy guy who kind of gets you interested in the quest, taking you to the Blue Palace, where you get transported into kind of another dimension where you meet Shegarath. And Shegarath presents you with all kinds of just sort of asinine challenges that you have to go through solving various riddles. Um, And you get this kind of one-on-one strange experience with him. And then after that is over, um, if you are successful, you are go back to your own dimension. Yep. And are gifted with this staff called the Wabajack, which um, is interesting. Uh, you you cast you can cast it, use the Wabajack to cast a spell on something, and it just turns whatever that is into some other random thing. So you can turn a person into a sweet roll, or you can turn a chicken into <laughs> I don't know what. Is it, um, is it really <clears throat> random, or do you have a choice for what it turns? It's into? really no, it's, random. It's random. Really? Yeah. It's no. really random. Yeah. yeah. That's totally Wabajack. Right. It is. So, um, it it can be potentially a very powerful thing in combat. <laughs> it could be, uh, <laughs> or very disappointing. Crazy. Is it possible yeah. that it would turn it into something worse than what it is? I don't know. Mm, I've don't never know. seen a case where. The Wabajack turned something into something else that was nastier than the original thing was. But correct me yeah, if I'm wrong. No, I've never I, seen that. Okay. I, I actually have not done a <clears throat> lot with the Wabajack. It's it's not one of my favorite quests personally. Um, right. It's just kind of a weird little place that. Yeah. I, and uh, and maybe it's just because I always do really terrible trying to aim that damn thing. <laughs> oh. God, I just have such a tough time using the Wabajack uh, that Joe the Stormtrooper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he turns a lot of things into sweet rolls and stuff that he wasn't intending to. So, Ooh, yeah. donuts. <laughs> donuts. Anyway, so yeah, that that's basically the Wabajack. We're getting us some involvement with with Shegarath in, in a weird item. And that's also kicked off and and you start that out in the Blue Palace, so you're in solitude, the yeah, same yeah. as the Bard's College. So that's true. You're kind there of all in the same area. There. Yep. Okay. Let's um, bring it together. And then that that brings us to the last one, which is uh, Molag Ball, which kicks off in Markarth. Markarth. Yep. And that is one where you know, pretty creepy. You know, you you go into kind of a, well, you get drawn into uh, a strange uh, house in Markarth by 
Isn't oh, it? Uh, it's a a Stendar. Stendar, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a vigilant of Stendar. He keeps pestering you until you finally go into the damn house. <laughs> yes. Every time you pass him, yes. he wants to know about these strange things going on. Right. Uh, so you go into the house, and yep. down in the basement, you come across the, the shrine or whatever it is. Yep. So, yep. Um, yeah, everything in Markarth's kind of dark and gloomy. Yeah. There's, there's really not a lot of good happening in Markarth. No, there's a lot of bad things <laughs> happening in Markarth. Um so, yeah, you have this encounter with Molag Ball that is fairly creepy, and the gist is that he sends you out because he, he wants you to find and return uh, a follower of his, a priest, and bring him no, back. No, it's a follower of Boethia. Oh, is it? It's a priest of Boethia. Ooh. Maybe that's why it's been so challenging, Stu. It's a, it's a priest of Boethia who has desecrated Maybe. his shrine or something on that, that order. Hmm. Ah. So he wants to okay. exact... Some sort of punishment, I suppose. All right. Since Molag Ball and Boethia get along so well. Oh, God, they hate each other, don't they? Kind of. Okay, how can we use that? <laughs> let's let's hook these up. Okay. So, first of all, I, I like the idea of proximity that you're talking about. Where so we we're have starting off in solitude, perhaps? Well, perhaps, right? Perhaps. I think that you can definitely see how, how the... Uh, Molag Ball and the Shegarath piece might connect together, not only by proximity, but by the fact that we have two danger opposing, princes involved. Yeah. Right? Right. I mean, they, they're they not really opposing, are they? Sh- Shegarath and, and Molag Ball? Oh, no, I was thinking Boethia. Yeah. Sorry. But, however, they are two of the four corners of the House of Troubles. True. Yeah, please true. be aware of this. Right? Aware. <laughs> I'm are aware. we all sufficiently aware? I'm aware. I think okay. we're aware. More people will be aware after they listen to Joe's thing. <laughs> One way or another, <laughs> we are going to drag our mod Beware. into this somehow. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. So let's start off at the House of Troubles then. Okay. And our, our, our friendly neighborhood bard goes down into the cairn. Maybe they okay. discovered the passage down below. Yep. Or otherwise. Mm-hmm. So yep. they find their cells, they make it way, way through, and they find this drum. And they pick this drum up because, well, they're a bard. Correct. So now from here, we got to get them up into solitude or perhaps Markarth. Mm-hmm. So if they've got this drum, maybe they want to know what its value is or maybe yeah. offer it up to the Bard's College. Right. Or if you've already completed the main quest for the Bard's College, you've <coughs> been sent on this side quest to get right. the drum. So we've got two so, ways to start this. Yeah. Yes. So... Recovering the drum from Haldir's cairn, okay, that really becomes a catalyst for, I think, getting the character to solitude. Right. To the Bard's College. And the character that gives you the quest for the Wabajack hangs out literally outside the Bard's College. He's doing laps around that take him right past the Bard's College. Yes. You know, every 15 seconds or so. Because... Yeah, he wants his master or whatever. Yeah, yep. he's looking that's for his right. master, and he wants you to go and find him. And that's what sends you up to the Blue Palace, Correct. and you engage in this whole thing, right? So I think those things fit together. In terms of a larger narrative, that's where I have a little bit of trouble with this one, mm-hmm. right? Um, I can see sequentially how they would fit together if... If a character has, say, started at the Bard's College, picked up the side quest to find the drum, has traveled all the way down to the southern end of Falkreath, the the cave where Haldir's Cairn is located is is just down the road from the House of Troubles. Right. So if you were using the House of Troubles, you can access Haldir's Cairn by either walking down the road and going in the cave entrance mm-hmm. or going through a secret exit in the basement of the House of Troubles dun, dun, directly dun, dun, into uh, Haldir's mm-hmm. Cairn. Right. Okay? So to me, you know, either way would work, but the thing I like about the introduction of the House of Troubles is the theme of the House of Troubles, which is the four corners of the House of Troubles. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's difficult to see here, but if you look behind, on each of the four walls inside the main chamber of the House of Troubles here, there is a plaque on the wall 
with a with a weapon representing each one of the four Daedric princes yep. that constitute the four corners of there's, the House of Trouble. The staff and the Maybe mace seal. and the dagger mm-hmm. and Got it. the big maul. Yep. Yep. So so the thing I like about the introduction of the mod is that it 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 introduces the concept of these the four corners, yeah. which could conceivably lead to something else later on. Now, I think you'd you'd have to we'll have to speculate on on how you might create some narrative around that. Right. But I mean, just in terms of progression, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So you've you've gone, you've gotten the drum, which you know is is your your primary goal. But the visit to the House of Troubles has somehow spurred your interest mm-hmm. in these Daedric princes and their relationship. So when you go back to the uh, the Bard College in Solitude right. and encounter this guy and hear about Shegarath, it might be maybe it's more gonna, natural that you'd investigate. Yep. Yeah, because it's going to trigger exactly. a memory of that that mm-hmm. relic on the wall. Right. Right. That could be interesting. Yeah. So. I guess, you know, what I would suggest here is maybe an expansion. Mm-hmm. Maybe an expansion of this to include each of the four Daedric princes. Okay. Right? Sure. So, that make for, yeah. The, yeah, the focus becomes... The focus becomes the finding corners, all of the relics. All the relics. Finding all the relics and learning as, as much as one can about each of the four corners. The first two maybe end up being Shegarath and Molag Ball, but... We also have a side quest that allows us to hit Melikath, right? Yep. What's yep. the last one? What's uh, the fourth? So, uh, Mayruns. Oh, razor. yeah. Mayruns Dagon. Razor. Yeah, that's right. So, you got... Which is in Dawnstar. The razor, the hammer, the mace, and the staff. Yep. Right? That is correct. Right. I like that. So, okay. I mean, just in terms of progression, that works out nicely. Mm-hmm. Let's think a little bit about what what could we do in terms of of narrative to make to make this all kind of tie together. What's that that meta that meta narrative that we always talk about that we can use to tie these things together? More so than just an interest by the individual in finding out more of them. What what does the interest come from? Well, if it's a Dunmer character, yeah. there would be a racial interest because they regard the Four Corners yeah. in their society. What role do the, the Four Corners play? Because they're not... Those gods are not part of the the Dunmer's sort of triumvirate of, yeah, of gods, yeah, that right? Might, I might be getting it mixed up with that. I mean, there's Boethia... Azura, mm-hmm. and I don't remember the third one. Yeah, I can't remember either. But there's Mephala. Was it Mephala? Oh, that could be. Yeah, I don't know. But there's there's the Daedric piece. Mm-hmm. So there could be. Yeah. You could tie in that Daedric piece with a Dunmer character. Yeah. As a as a racial interest. Um, yeah. I like the idea of the Dunmer here, just you because could. they tend to pay particular attention to the Daedric Princes. Right. Yeah. Is there anything that would allow them to sort of feel closer in their Mm -hmm. worship, if you will, Mm -hmm. after having done that? Is there anything in particular about being a bard that would give you an advantage in that Um, that sort of spiritually speaking? Bardish type of, well, a bardish type of character could look at Mm -hmm. it as gathering material for stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, They would recognize the drum as being significant insofar as that it's, you know, Mm. a quality instrument. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they recognize whose instrument it is or was. There's only one kind of a thing. Right. Mm. Um, You know what I like is the concept of, well, if you're playing a modded game, this would work. What if we take what if we take almost like the uh, epicosity approach to this Mm -hmm. and say that. Your character, whoever that character is, dragonborn or not, uh, is the the primary mover here. But the idea is that you have a group of people who are in pursuit of these. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Right? Sure. On the one hand, we've got a warrior who's going to make use of Malakath's hammer. Yep. An orc warrior would be ideal. Yep. We've got an assassin 
who is going to make use of the razor, the razor a mage who's going to use the wabajack, and then a knight or something that's going to use the mace or a priest, mm. right? Sure. And you've got three followers, uh, so four including yourself, all of whom are pursuing, pursuing these things together with the idea that each one is going to wield a mythic weapon representative of the four corners of the House of Troubles. There you go. And the the end goal could be anything. I mean, yeah. you know, you could be going on a, on a mission of world domination. It could be something right. like that. Or it could be something uh, much smaller scale. But the idea is that the, the focus is recovering these mythic weapons as as part of, Maybe. of the mythos of your character's mm-hmm. group. Maybe take a inverse approach and have the group be vigilance of Stendar, who are going to wield these items in spite uh, of the Daedric princes. Ooh, that's pretty good too. Basically using the weapons against them. I like that too. Ooh, very good. You caught Stu off guard on that one. You did. You did. So. Or the other option too is to take that same tack, but rather than wielding them. The idea is to take them out of circulation. Collect yeah, go them. Hide them. And Collect lock them, them away. Lock them away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I do somehow like the idea of, of the characters actually wielding them, though. That That's pretty cool when yeah. you think about it. Yeah. Um, so it, it would be kind of an interesting way to take a lightly modded game, lightly in terms of you'd at the very least, you'd you'd just have to run some kind of some kind of mod that allows you to have multiple followers, right? So that you could go and recover these things. I guess if you're playing a vanilla game, you could take the the same concept with multiple followers, create a character who had some kind of a disorder, and in turn was changing personalities or fighting styles yeah. and yeah. kind of working through. And it, yeah, it'd, it'd have to it'd be a little more uh, you know, head role-play type of yep. yes, narrative. Yes, it's possible Absolutely. to do it. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you could even have four different vanilla playthroughs, assuming uh-huh. mm-hmm. different parts of that play. Different already, one of the characters taking on a different part of each of the quests. Right, right. Cool. So uh, I got I to gotta say goodbye to Hawkeye. Um, bye, so, Hawkeye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Or was um, Hawkeye saying goodbye to Gunner Eleven? That could be too. <sighs> I think that might have been it. That could be. Well, hello Hawkeye. Hello <laughs> Hawkeye. <laughs> I suppose um, we should say goodbye to Gunner Eleven. Goodbye Gunner Eleven. Goodbye. We'll see you Gunner. Goodbye. Guys, I have to go. We'll miss you. Bye everyone. Good luck with the quest. Well, we're assuming that Thanks. having to go means like going bye bye for the night and oh, not going to be back yeah. in five minutes because I got to yeah. go. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to assume gone. I think with yeah. the, sad, Gunner, if you the come saddie back, face, us. it's probably a, I've, I've got to have leave. to leave. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. We're sorry to see you go. I yes. think so. All right. Well, this I, I think we <laughs> come up with some pretty good things now. here. <laughs> I think we come up with some pretty good things. Um, let's see. Who's waving around behind Joe now? Um, I don't know. Is someone dancing? Yeah, someone's <laughs> dancing. I That might be Strings. She can't gets, really tell. She's she gets quite drunk animated. From time to time. She's loaded. <laughs> yeah, she gets, well, it is her night off. <laughs> yeah, it is her night off. Yeah, Robard's kind of taken over, so um, she's free to imbibe. I know, right? <laughs> let's 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 add another one in. Oh, who just joined us? Who did? Diogenes Caster. Oh. It's okay that you're late because we're still here. Boom. Move that down there. <laughs> Tell me where we are now, Stu. <laughs> Give me a little uh, tour we are, of the We're background. in the House of Troubles still, but this is where we're in the other adjoining room. So uh, right behind Matt's head is the hearth of Mehrunes Dagon. You can see Mehrunes Dagon looking straight down at Matt right now like, you, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then there's all kinds of shenanigans going on here. Um, I, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of happy with this. I, so I can like you summarize. Give a little summary. Yeah. What would you do if it was you? Uh, well, to be honest, uh, if it was me, 
I like the idea of having three followers, having four characters together, including the player character in a merry band or not so merry band, uh, going around and trying to recover a artifact of each one of the four corners of the House of Troubles. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, that ties our two quests, our three quests together, by using by using Haldir's Cairn as a jump off point, mm-hmm. along with the House of Troubles mod, to pique the character's interest, for example, or to introduce the Four Corners concept right. to the player character if they already haven't gotten it from some from some other quest. Right. And it gives you a nice home touch point to see all the stuff that you're going back for on your next round, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that, that kind of kicks everything off, but um, then we've got a scenario where we've got four characters. Each one uh, is wielding a different weapon, Mm -hmm. which, which I like the diversity of them too. It feels like a D and D party kind of does <laughs> you've got your warrior <laughs> yep. you've got your thief assassin you've got your mage and then you've got your your knight priest kind of right, a thing or cleric right. your healer. type of thing your healer type um i so i love that concept and because of who the weapons come from because of what they look like because of what they do it makes for a rather dark group yeah that are kind of going around potentially right so if i were going to play it that's how i would play it um and then I would probably come up with some larger meta narrative to kind of explain who this group is and what their ultimate goals are. Yeah, right. But I don't think that the ultimate goal, the larger goal, def- necessarily has to influence this little piece of it. This mm-hmm. this piece feels like a nugget that kind of fits in and sets the stage for some larger, more interesting battles right. to come in the future. Right. So how, how would you pull it together based on our discussion, Joe? Um You know, I think I would probably, t- I would probably take it from the, the vigilant standpoint, mm-hmm. and and try to play it as this uh, group that it's out to go and obtain these these artifacts, these relics, and then maybe in their quest to get them, and as the longer they hold on to them, perhaps it starts to warp. Ooh. Who they are? Oh, that's, oh wow. so that's good. they start out with good intent, but then are ultimately influenced by the inherent evil of the objects, wow. and become a party of people who just are basically affected. fit the people that they were trying to protect or uh, obliterate. Against, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they become who they were initially set to defend against. Wow. You know, th- oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now now we're on to something. So we've got a good what, group that yeah. becomes a bad group. What if you do this as a preamble to Dawn Guard and say, oh, that one. now we've got the vampire menace. We're going to fight fire with fire. We're going to go out and get these nasty weapons, okay? <laughs> and we are going to confront the vampire menace wielding Their own weapons. these these kind of evil or mm-hmm. nasty weapons that that come from the Daedric Princes, the four corners right. of the House of Troubles, right? And they take those weapons and they go forth and they fight the vampires, but over the course of time it creates this this slow boiling kind of situation where they they become corrupted. Or um even better one member of the group becomes more corrupted and more powerful and the other three have to face that moment right where they they have to let these these powerful weapons go and they have to try and stop this person Mm. um so in in that case you're you're creating your own villain right but it's a (laughs) long-term villain (laughs) right right and so you start out with three followers but at some point one of those followers becomes a villain you keep the other two and then you start down this road of, you know, hey, our mage became extra evil, <laughs> right? <laughs> vanished and is doing all these bad things and then returns to the scene having renamed himself. Wow. Mirac. Oh, Mirac. <laughs> oh. What if you did that? Holy. I like Toledo. that. I Holy like that Toledo. A lot. <laughs> no, that. 
That could be interesting. That would be, yeah. And Mirak, of course, he's renamed himself the all-powerful and mighty Mirak. And you can say that he's either uh, made up these delusions of a previous life, an ancient life where he did all these things, mm. mm-hmm. or the real Mirak is dead. And this guy, in his delusion, has taken on the persona of that of that Mirak and is trying to portray himself as the Mirak of old. A little Dread Pirate Roberts thing. Dread right. Pirate Roberts. Yeah. Ooh! <laughs> I like All that. All right, somebody do that. That could be fun. <laughs> we don't have time, but <laughs> somebody do that. that. Somebody do that. Tell us <laughs> Come on. That, how it came out. Damn. I Record it if how, you can. I don't even know how you guys put this stuff together. So oh, fast. that Holy was cow. fun. That was a good one. That was Watching a nice capper. Yeah. Moments where the two of you just, oh, wait, <laughs> but what if we did this? <laughs> yeah. No, that was good. Yeah. I like it. I like uh, it. I like that a lot. The, the triple quest connector. Yeah. yeah, there you go, man. Sweet. Both DLC tied in. Uh, the nice thing, too, I think, mm-hmm. about about bringing Mirak into it is it gets you... It gets you that experience on Solstheim where there's more Dunmer, there's more history, there's more talk right. about the Daedric princes yep. and how they influence culture and blah, blah, blah. Right? I mean, yep. Yep. Y- you yep. have more exposure just, to that. Yeah, it just yeah. feeds into the, the Daedric yeah. it, lore. Yep, just gussies the whole thing right up. So, yes, gussies. if you do that, record it and send us a link. <laughs> Whatever, yeah, it is. I don't know how you record <laughs> we'll watch that. it. Um, well, for the people who are recording their own game playthroughs and sending us links, thank you. We'd like to watch all the gameplay that you're putting out on YouTube as well. Yes. Uh, we want to try to get some uh, links to folks who are doing that, folks who are long-term uh, watchers, listeners, mm-hmm. partakers, Patreons. Uh, we'll make sure to get those out as well because we love the storytelling that you do too. Yes, so if you want to reenact this quest in interpretive dance, record it, <laughs> send it to us. That's fine. Yes. That's fine. We will we will view it. We will comment. <laughs> so Or maybe we'll do our own interpretive dance. Perhaps. Perhaps. Nice. In green screen. <laughs> I'm impressed. <now. laughs> yes. Well, yes. thanks for teaching me about the Wabajack. That'll be fun to go play with. Wabajack. We were oh, having yeah. some folks saying that you can do some crazy things like turning chickens into dragons, which I think would be Maybe Ooh. a really bad idea, but pretty cool. Damn. Yeah, the Wabajack's an interesting item. Yeah, I've never <laughs> researched it much, but my assumption was always that the higher level you got, the nastier it got, but maybe it doesn't. I mean, every time I've used it or seen it used, it's always created some kind of innocuous thing, right? like a cheese wheel. You know, I've never seen it. I've never seen it create a dragon. But no, but I know. have. I All admittedly, right. I haven't used it much in game. So yeah. So anyway. Well, I'm gonna go looking for the Wabajack. All right, it's in the blue palace. Oh, Thanks ladies so and gentlemen, quests connected. <laughs> connected. Connected. There was three. Yeah. How do we do that? Uh, no, let's not. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I don't know how that is. Don't cross the streams. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't cross the streams. But if you do, tell us about it. You never yeah, cross absolutely. the streams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this was a lot of fun. We hope absolutely. you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. Look for announcements coming out uh, in the next week or so about our next location. Now, it's supposed to be Candle Hearth Hall, but depending on how and whether or not we can work things out with Dark Fox, we may broadcast from Karen Theer Tower. So we're working on that, uh, but we will make sure that you are updated as we go. Uh, You can follow the Virtual Immersion Tour landing page at vit.charactercrusade.com. You can also get updates on everything that's going on on the Facebook page. Matt is trying to keep up with that, and I am trying to keep up with uh, Twitter. So, you know, either one of those will hopefully give you some, uh, some pointers uh, if we if we come up with some last minute changes or whatever, but I think Joe is keeping up on Tamriel Vault. Yes. Yep. Joe is doing a lot of interesting things right now. So so watch for more yes. stuff from Joe because Joe is full of launching awesomeness coming up here. <laughs> yeah, he's doing a lot more launching awesomeness <laughs> than than I am. That's for sure. So <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure, Joe. No pressure. Everyone, no watch pressure. out for more Joe awesomeness. Yes. So that basically wraps it up for tonight, guys. We really thank you for attending the live stream. We are going to be kicking this off officially on Friday. We'll launch it as an official video on Friday. And Matt will be working to see if we can't extract some usable audio from this and turn it into a legit podcast. Absolutely. Um, But uh, 
just make sure you tune into those places if you're looking for anything. And we appreciate any support you can give us, whether it's Patreon, uh, whether it's a, a rating in iTunes or buying a T-shirt. We appreciate all that. We use every penny of it to do this. What you see here. Crazy ass stuff like and this. And if you want to confuse your friends and colleagues, buy them one of our shirts, and then you can explain oh, it to them too. Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's the way to Lumberg do it. Lumberg needed one of our mugs. <laughs> yes. Befuddle <laughs> everyone. Um, so until next time, everybody, enjoy the journey because it's all about the experience, right? And the Drogger Logger. And the Drogger Logger. Yes. Good night. Good Bye-bye. Night.